If you've ever edited a digital video together before, you've probably seen this big long list of different media formats available to you. But have you ever stopped to wonder what all these names mean? Which one should you be using and why? Well, to answer this question, we have to understand digital video codecs. The word codec is short for encoder decoder. In the context of digital video, an encoder is a bit of software which converts a digital video into a stream of ones and zeros that can be written to a file or sent over the internet. And a decoder is a program that takes that stream and converts it back into a full color digital video that can be sent to a display device. While this might seem fairly straightforward, it can be quite a bit more complicated than you might think. A digital image is comprised of a grid of RGB color values, and many of these images played back together create a video. But in order to store a video into a file, we have to express all that information as one long string of ones and zeros. So we have to be organized about how we store that information. We could, for example, just store each RGB value left to right, top to bottom. That would work. but. What if someone else is encoding their color values starting at the center and moving out, for example? In the real world, the encoding phase and the decoding phase are often done on very different pieces of software running on very different computers. In order for our image to be transferred correctly, both the source and the destination have to agree on exactly how the image is encoded, or else it's going to end up a garbled mess. The solution to this problem is to publish a set of standards that describe how images should be encoded and decoded. If I'm writing a program which needs to encode an image into a file, I refer to one of the published codec standards and build my program to encode images according to those specifications. Then my friend on the playback side can write a decoding program that assumes the encoded file adheres to those same specifications. As long as both of us have followed the codec specifications correctly, then we should be able to encode and decode images together without issue. In fact, every device that's been programmed to be compatible with that codec will be able to play back the files that I create flawlessly. If they can't, then one of us hasn't adhered to the codec specifications correctly. Although devices like cameras and computers are built very differently in terms of both hardware and software, Codecs make it possible to transfer digital video information from one device to another without any confusion. However, compatibility isn't the only thing that codecs bring to the table. They also allow for image compression. Storing every single RGB value for every single pixel of every single frame of the video would require an enormous amount of data, so much so that it would be completely impractical to work with. So, as part of the encoding process, we can compress the information in order to reduce the bit rate of our image, and therefore reduce the file size. There are two main kinds of compression out there, lossless and lossy. Lossless compression compresses the image without losing any fine detail whatsoever. You could put an image through a lossless codec infinitely many times, and it would still come out the other end looking exactly the same as it started. As you can imagine though, the requirement that no information can be lost means that there isn't much you can do to reduce the bitrate. Sure, simple images can be compressed very effectively, but complex ones like we see in the real world can't be compressed much without losing information. As such, lossless codecs typically have a very high bitrate and are not very convenient to work with. To combat this, we have lossy compression. Lossy compression can reduce file sizes very significantly by throwing away little bits of detail that the eye isn't likely to notice. There are a wide variety of techniques that lossy codecs employ to do this, so many in fact that it would need to be a topic for another video. However, what's important to understand is that more compression means smaller file sizes but reduced visual quality. Many lossy codecs will offer the user some choice about how heavily they want the image to be compressed. A lossy codec with a high bitrate can still produce a very good looking image, while a lossy codec with a low bitrate will be very compact but will look noticeably worse than the original. 
So how much compression should you use then? Well, it depends on your needs. If, for example, you're shooting a video that is going to have heavy color correction or visual effects applied, then you should probably use the highest quality codec you can and take a light touch when it comes to compression. However, if you're running a video streaming service like YouTube and Netflix, then you're going to need to keep the bitrate as low as possible so as to not overwhelm your user's internet connections. It all just depends on what you need. Now, with all that in mind, let's go over some common codecs you'll see when working in the world of digital video. Starting off, we have the one and only H.264 codec. This codec is designed to be as efficient as possible, delivering the lowest possible file sizes without losing too much visual fidelity. It's very widely adopted, meaning that H.264 files are compatible with pretty much everything. It's particularly popular among web streaming services, since it allows them to deliver HD content to their users without putting undue strain on the average home internet connection. However, since its compression is fairly lossy and not optimized for playback performance, it's not ideal for work like color correction and visual effects. And while the quality of the image might look fine on your typical smartphone, it's going to leave a lot to be desired if it's projected on a movie theater screen. There's also H.264's younger brother, H.265, which has the same goals as H.264, however it's able to employ newer compression techniques to deliver even better images at the same bit rates as H.264. It is becoming increasingly popular, however its compatibility isn't as universal as its predecessor, so it's something to be aware of. Moving up, we have the high quality lossy codecs such as Apple ProRes, DNX HD, and GoPro Cineform. These codecs are designed to maintain a very high degree of image quality while also delivering a high degree of playback performance. While their file sizes aren't as huge as lossless codecs, they're still too burdensome to stream over the internet. So these codecs are mostly used for high quality image capture on the camera side or high performance editing on the post-production side. In the realm of cinema, Quality is the top priority. Because of this, most high-budget films use raw codecs for capture, which retain every bit of detail captured by the image sensor, and they maintain visually lossless compression all the way to the theater screen. The standard codec for digital theaters is JPEG 2000, which is very, very different from normal JPEG. It's a lossless codec, which allows images to be blown up to huge scales without any loss in detail whatsoever. So that's a very basic introduction to the world of video codecs. This is really only the tip of the iceberg, so if you want to learn more about things like different kinds of compression and the advantages and disadvantages of different codecs, then be sure to get subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of the future content I have planned. Anyways, my name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.